Hello, how is everybody doing? Come on, join us. This is Testify. My name is Beatrice Watare, and I will be sitting in for Sharon Naitore. We are about to have an amazing, amazing interview today. And by the way, there's something Sharon also says. This is where our faith in Jesus Christ is made strong. So I'm really looking forward to not just being the Beatrice that began this interview, but being a different Beatrice by the time the show comes to an end. And I believe that transformation awaits you on the other side so come on and join us and please do speak with us as well on our whatsapp number 0708222323 hope tv kenya on all our social media platforms i'm very much excited i am pumped up for this particular interview we're going to have an amazing time so without much further ado let me welcome my guests <laughs> in fact let me just do it for you uh be <laughs> be oh yeah, it's a B. Yeah. Yes, okay, okay. I should have done some revision. Karibu, karibu. Sana. Sana, sana, sana. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. Uh, it's such a great uh, honor yeah. to be here. Mm -hmm. Back again at Hope TV. Yes. Asante uh, sana. Where are you going? Asante. Uh, Asante. <laughs> Last time I said Munike Karuma up so that okay. ni easy as a queen gear to find your interview. Take it, take it. Because we, we definitely need what the Lord is doing in your life we with the Lord, us. We thank the Lord. <laughs> Welcome. Asante. Welcome to testify. Thank you, Beatrice. How do you feel today about sharing whatever it is God has placed in your heart? Uh you know, Psalm one oh seven verse number two. Mm -hmm. It says it's actually a question. It says, Have you been redeemed? Mm. And the Bible says, if you have been redeemed, mm. then come forth and make known yeah. the power of God in your redemption. Yes. And so there's something very important called testifying. Mm. Testimony is very important. Mm -hmm. The world uses it. The betting people... <laughs> <laughs> you know, they yeah. tell us, you know what, Ekelea 50, Bob, Ekelea 50, Bob, Ekelea 50. And then they bring to us one person. Yes. One ampatia, two million. <laughs> and then guys are like, oh, so this thing works. You yeah. Know? <laughs> so if the world uses that. Yes. What about us? How much more? How much more? Yes. Yeah, we need to use it. And so it's very important to come and to testify. I'm mm -hmm. so ready to testify yeah. what the Lord has been doing in my life. Mm. So that our faith can be built. Yes. Yes. We need season. to build up this faith. You know, it reminds me of this verse in Revelation yes. that says, And they overcame by the blood of the Lamb mm -hmm. and the power the, of, the of their testimony. Exactly. So exactly. I'm, I'm really excited. But let's yeah. get to know Beire. <laughs> Let us get to know Beire. <laughs> Tell us about your childhood, how you grew up. Uh, Beire is uh, a second born mm -hmm. in a family of two. Okay. So he's the last one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, yes. Uh, we are two boys, my oh. elder brother mm -hmm. and myself. Mm. Uh, we grew up in Dandora. Oh, wow. I uh, went to school in Dandora. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to go campus Dandora. I'm pretty sure I'm going to say, where did you go? So, I'm going to go. Okay. Yes, yes. The, yes. Uh, I grew up in Dandora. Mm. Uh, so many things in my life, I knew them in Dandora. Okay. I uh, became a church leader mm -hmm. back in PCA Dandora. Mm. From my teenage life, yeah, uh, and went on like that. Mm. I am a husband to mm -hmm. one, Masu, yes, and a father of three children. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. I was she pastor at Karura Community Chapel. Yes. Uh, and a minister, mm. a gospel minister. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's wow. In a nutshell, who be raised? Oh, yes, that's yes, beautiful. Yes. Bire is a child of God. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. And, and now um, I think it's a story that um, everybody always asks themselves. So your salvation journey, how did you come to the knowledge of Christ? Yes. How was it? My salvation journey started in 2005. Mm. Uh, I was a form one student. Mm -hmm. And one guy came and he sang a song and he said, I remember the lines. The lines were like, uh, imagine a man who leaves his palatial home mm. to come and live like a mere man 
for you and for me. Mm. Wow. A king who leaves his palatial home. And when you look at that story, a man who comes, he's born in a manger. Mm. You know, the epitome of humility and poverty. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm. Because being born in a manger is not something I wouldn't want my children to be born in such a yeah. place. But that person left his palatial home to come for me and for you. Mm. And I think that stirred a lot of questions in my life. Right. And I said, I want to know this man who comes in so humble like that, just for me and mm -hmm. for someone else. Yeah. And that's how I gave my life to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. From there, I have served in uh, the worship team of Dandora uh -huh. Secondary School. Mm. Went uh, all the way to my church then, mm -hmm. PCA Dandora. Mm. I, I have been the worship uh, leader, youth choir director, mm -hmm. youth chairperson mm -hmm. in the whole parish mm -hmm. and unofficial in the whole presbytery. Wow. Came from there, went to become a worship pastor in a church in Fika. Mm. And then came back again to PCA Dandora as a youth coordinator, which mm. is the youth pastor anyway. Yeah. And I would pastor a congregation of three churches. Mm. And so wow. that, that has been now the journey. Mm. The journey in my that's, ministry. That's amazing. Exactly. And so you know, from form uh -huh. one yes. all the way, I have not backslidden. Yeah. <laughs> Still held on to that. Still thing. held on. Yes. That is beautiful. Mm. And, and you know, in high school, you'd be asked, what do you want to be? What do you want to be? Yes. And at no point <laughs> <laughs> do you say you want to a worship pastor. I want to be a pastor. Youth, youth minister. You know, I never I never had anyone in my class say something like that. I never had that. <laughs> because God, God has a plan for you. It's true. You know, you mm. don't have a plan for yourself. Oh, my. Hey, that's I true. For me, I yes. thought I would be a star. By uh. the time I'm <laughs> done with Form 4, I will be here. Everybody is talking about me. Yeah. Like, but mm. it's a journey. God has something else in yeah. store for you. That's true. And so it's good to be in the process and just like mm -hmm. uh, and appreciate what the Lord is doing in your life. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And did your parents embrace, you know, the path that you took growing up? No, 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 no. My, my, <laughs> wow. my, my parents were like, in my family, like my mom used to tell me, candid, yeah. clearly and candid. Mm. She used to tell me, I nyuba near engineers, <laughs> na accountants. <laughs> wow. Because my, my brother is actually a, an economist. Yes. And an accountant. So since now I have him as the marking scheme. Yeah. <laughs> every other thing comes is, Engineer, accountant, yes. music to my mom was like, no, no, no. And so he became very rebellious, by the way, mm. in, in my secondary school. Mm. I was so rebellious because I'm like, this is my passion. This yeah. is what I want to do. I want to pursue this. Mm -hmm. And you see, sometimes foolish is bad. Being stupid is bad. Mm -hmm. Because let me tell you, what would it have costed me to read yeah. Because I wasn't a daft guy. Yeah. And get that grade mm -hmm. and then go to Kampo and change my course. Mm. But you see, you don't know. Nobody yeah. tells you. <laughs> you are just living in a, mm. a facade kind of life because yeah. you are in a, in a cocoon. Mm -hmm. you, you just want to go to campus and do music. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I didn't pass in Dandora Secondary Oh school. my. So I got a seat plane. <laughs> Not bad, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, I never used to read. Uh, yes. Just there. <laughs> uh, and so my brother came and talked to me. Mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, you know, what, does, what do you say? It? Um, like he spoke sense. He gave me his two senses. To, told me, you know what? The discipline right now, it cannot take you anywhere. Oof. Why wouldn't you go back to school and... Improve on your grade. Mm. So that's how I went to Jombe Boys High School. Ah. I went back to Form 3. Wow. Oh God. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. Ah. Uh -huh. So, and I got a B play. Oh. It was bad. Because. But that's. 
No, it was bad because I didn't go to campus, campus. Oh, I missed man. campus with one point. You know, <laughs> ladies were going with uh, 61. Yeah. And uh, no, ladies were going with 59. Mm. And uh, guys were going with 61. Mm. I had 60. Oh, wow. All right. So I missed campus because of that one point. And so my mom asked me, Sasa, utafaya nini? Nilipabia huku kwa guni accountants. Nigeria. Nigeria. So I went to do a CASNEB course called uh, CICT, Certified Information Communication Technologies. Mm. And then I did up to section three, I realized, I, Where? Computer and I is like a, I, I, want, I want to talk to people. <laughs> Not to machine. Not to machine. <laughs> <laughs> so Kaduliza, what else do you want to do? But then she was very gracious. Yeah. The only thing, the only grace she didn't have was the music grace. <laughs> and so I went to Zitek University and I did yeah. tourism and uh, mm. management. Mm -hmm. And that's how now I became, I became, uh, uh, mm. like, I, I did that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a tourist guy, okay. Because <laughs> I don't know who else to become. I can't be a tourist. <laughs> yeah. After you've done tourism and management, what yes. do you become? <laughs> <laughs> Tourist manager. I don't know. I don't know what they call them. To a guide and, uh... <laughs> wow. Oh yes, my. Yes. So from there, that's now I started saying, you know what? Let me pursue this music. So mm. in 2013, 2014, that's when I did my mm -hmm. my diploma right. in uh, tourism and management. When I cleared, I jumped into music, mm. 2013. Got turned up its own. Now we did so many tours with mm -hmm. it. And now in 2017, now I started my journey mm. as a the vocalist. Wow. So it has been like six years now Oof. of this ministry. Of back and forth, back and forth trying to exactly. find your yes, place. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> we are not yet there, but the Lord yes. is doing something. We keep moving. We keep moving. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, that is inspiring because I think for me I definitely have a different story. <laughs> but I'll tell you guys another day. Yes. And um, now let's get to the meat of the conversation. Yes. You know, you having grown up um, from one you're born again yes. and you're pursuing, you know, ministry mm. and all that. Mm. What is your perspective about being born again with relation to doing the right thing and holiness? Yes. What were you thinking at that age? At that age, because of the teachings I had gotten, mm. I thought holiness is my is my ability to become holy. It's my responsibility. Mm. I have to really work very hard to become holy. Mm. And sometimes that's not the right way because yeah. the only person who can make you holy mm. is the holy one. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's true. In Jude chapter uh, chapter one, it's only one chapter, verse number twenty four. It says, "He who has the ability mm. to make you not to fall or to stumble, yes. be glory to him." Yeah. You get the whole point. Mm. And so, because of the teachings we've had and everything, I just knew, you know what? I have to be holy. Mm. It's my responsibility to be holy. Mm -hmm. And you will fail because you don't lean on your own understanding. That's true. All right? And it's not by thy power mm -hmm. that things work. Yeah. It's by his strength. That's true. And so I really didn't know how to release myself to God and mm -hmm. to allow him to take charge. Yeah. Rather, I used to know I have to say no to things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's my responsibility. Yes. To do that. Yeah. And so that part of my life mm. have you ever heard uh, uh, job three mm. where he says what i feared Oof. befell on me yes you get the whole point mm -hmm. because i feared not to stumble yeah not to fall yeah not to mm. that is what i attracted Oof. you get the whole point mm. and in 20 15 mm -hmm. October, I got myself into that level. Yeah. Because I had a girlfriend we had dated mm -hmm. and uh, we were planning to marry. Mm -hmm. And then I was a worship pastor in a church in Thika. Mm -hmm. And 
those times when you spend together wanting to know one another and something just happened. Mm. You orchestrate because I mean it's my action. <laughs> Doing. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we find ourselves in a predicament. Oh my. My girlfriend is pregnant. Oof. My girlfriend gets pregnant. And I am a worship pastor. My initial church is calling me to become the youth pastor. Mm. And so when I realize all these things cuz I had already done my my first my first interview mm. and my second interview and I had passed. Yeah. So I was waiting for my third interview mm -hmm. and the third interview was also a confirmation. Mm. Just after being confirmed, I, I remember it was uh, in November mm. of uh, the year 2015. So the church confirms I'm a youth pastor. I remember I'm also a worship pastor mm. in that church. Mm. And I am confirmed. But then my girlfriend tells me by the way I'm pregnant. Oof. I have never been shocked in my life <laughs> like that time. <laughs> so I was wondering, so where do I what do I do? Yeah. Who do I tell? And since I didn't want to be like Adam who sinned and hid. hid <laughs> I went before the Lord and the Spirit of the Lord just told me, you know what? Go clean tell the people that you serve under the truth. Oh my. And so the first person I told was the one I was uh, worshipping, uh, the, the, um, the, the, the pastor mm. that I was uh, under mm -hmm. as the worship pastor. Went to him and I told him uh, um, I messed up yeah. and uh, my girlfriend is pregnant. Uh, and I will understand if you would relieve me of my duties. Because once you get into a church, you know there are procedures, practices yeah. and procedures. Yeah. And, and as a leader, you have to adhere to that. Mm. And I think the reason as to why most people are hurt by the church is, first of all, they don't accept their mistake. Mm -hmm. And number two, they don't accept that a church is led and ran by procedures. Mm. There are constitutions that guide a church, mm -hmm. and there is what a church does. And so the church told me, you know what, for us, uh, I know, because I had also told him, I have been called back by the church that I was in to become, to take up the role of a youth coordinator, yeah. with, which is relatively a youth pastor. Mm. Uh, I, would, I would also want to, uh, what do you call it, uh, tender in my resignation. Yeah. And uh, the pastor told me, you know what, I, have, I, I will be traveling for the next two months or three months. Mm. Is it possible that you still stay and lead people in praise and worship until I come back. Huh? You get the whole point. Mm. But he told me, even before that happens, please, it's okay to go to the church and tell them <laughs> the mess that has happened. Mm. And so confess your sin to them. <laughs> <laughs> Where? It was the James mm. uh, confession. You see, yeah. confess your, your sin one, one and to another, another and be healed. And be healed. <laughs> <laughs> so it was literal. Why? So I and I asked him, "Do you also need my girlfriend to be in front there?" Mm. He said, "Yes." Hi. <laughs> oh my! Seems he go ako we have to carry it together. You know, the worst thing is that Hush. a lady showcases what happened Where? in the secret <laughs> later on. Aki, it, it will be painted on her face, on her, on her forehead. You, you no, no evidence. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it cannot so, be used against you. Yes. No one will know. So hey. I, 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 I went. Mm. I told my girl, and it took me some well, few weeks to convince her and tell her, you know what? I can only imagine. Let's look at it in the positive 
Why? Because nobody will have any room to point a finger at us that's because true. we came clean. Mm. And that's what we did. Mm. So we went before the church and we said, uh, guys, uh, I know I have been your worship pastor. And uh, just like any other man, I have sinned. Mm. And, uh, and there is the evidence of my action. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yes. And uh, here I am, just here to say, forgive me. And because I have asked forgiveness from the Lord. Yeah. And the Lord gave me the direction that I need to come clean mm. to my pastor. And my pastor told me, so that there will be no questions and rumors, I come clean. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can, and I know I'm not at the masses of the people, yeah. but at the masses of God, but I also need your forgiveness. And if possible, if you would allow me to also mm. continue leading you in worship, and if it's okay to relieve me of my duties, I will understand. And uh, after the church deliberated, I think for two weeks and three weeks, I was told, you know what, you can come and go on with the work. Wow. And uh, that's how now I ended my tenure until until uh, April the 2016, mm. when now I handed over the ministry to someone else. Yeah. And uh, and now I joined now PCA. On the other hand, after winning all those interviews, mm-hmm. I had to go clean to my pastor. Wow. And I told my pastor then. Uh, and I went clean to her, I booked an appointment, I said, you guys have given me a task and a yeah. job. Mm. Here I am, I have messed up. Yes. Do you still want me to be part and parcel of the team? Mm. And elders and, uh, and, 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 and the parish minister, they had to deliberate mm. and to see whether they were willing to risk that yeah. uh, 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 journey mm. with me or not. But I think because of my work there and the ability to hold up the team, mm-hmm. we had... We, they took like four months because you remember I have, I have to still mm. uh, continue serving in Thika yeah. even as they deliberate. And we had series of, of, of elders and pastors meetings mm. so that we can see how it's called a discipleship class yeah. where you are led through a discipleship class with your elder because we had districts and mm. I had my district and the elder of that district and my parish minister would sit down with me mm-hmm. and tell me what is the journey, where are we, uh, how do we reconcile you with God? Mm. You get the whole point. Because again, a church has its practices that's true. and procedures. That's true. And that's how now I became confident, mm. knowing that the Lord was with me, even yes. in my messing up. Yeah. Because the Lord says, even in your messing up, come, let's reason together. He does not say, you reason, mm. find yourself, and then come. Mm-mm. No, no, no. He says, let's reason together. together. Mm. And that's how I found myself in the whole journey now of mm-hmm. pastoral team. Wow. Yes. I mean, that's a mind-blowing story because yes. I'm sure those who are watching, they're probably wondering, how? How do I even get myself to that point? Yes. And maybe you can just take us back mm-hmm. to when these events began to unfold. Yes. How difficult or easy was it to now come forth and say the truth? Like, what was going on in your mind, you know, after God has instructed you need to come clean with yes. your person? Was it a struggle for you to do it? Of course it is. Mm. Of course it is. First of all, if your mother, coming clean to your mother was a struggle. Mm. <laughs> oh my. Coming clean to your parents and saying, you know what, I messed up uh, and we might be expecting, you might be called granny very soon. You see, my mom has brought me up in church. Mm-hmm. And you know how that is. Yeah. 
with our parents. Mm -hmm. It's like where we e mambo gani? <laughs> Sasa hii ni aibu gani una yeah. you see? Yeah. But because I tell you when the Lord is with you things just it was struggle, it was a battle within me. How will my mom take it up? I have disappointed her. Mm. I have disappointed God. I have disappointed how first of all that is my mom come clean to the people that are above yes, you yeah. I, you know I in authority above you mm. and my mom is above me in authority yeah and that's the first person I had to tell oof you get the whole point so the battle that was in my mind what about my girlfriends uh, 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 you know <laughs> oh my I can only imagine it was bad yes. in our mind until when we sat down with them and I sat down with my mom I told mom hey mom uh, this and this happened and the journey has mm. started mm. wow and i remember the look that my mom gave me she smiled <laughs> oh she smiled yeah she wow smiled. and she said we shall pull through mm. oh, wow that's so encouraging I, i mean yeah and i knew from that time that the lord is with me If she's on your team, exactly. God is with you. God is with me. Wow. So it was easy and she asked me, so what else are you doing because again you went for an interview in church, you have passed. Uh, what do you do? I said uh, after my prayers, I, uh, God told me that I need to go clean to the pastors mm. that I under. And so I will start with the one that I am working with mm -hmm. and then from there I will go to now the pastors who have given me the work. Yeah. And that's how it was. So when I went to my pastor, of course it was hard to even describe and explain. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was very young then. Yes. I was very young. Mm. Uh, and I, and God gave me just words to say. Mm. Said uh, I have messed up. Yeah. And I'm here because I want to be clean and to be right. Yes. God. Mm. And being right with God, part of it is coming clean to the people that God has ordained as yeah. his people to lead his flock. Mm. So I came clean. I came clean. That mm. I think the battle was with my mom first. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know how to she even will present it. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. And how she will take it up. Yeah. Yes. Wow. I mean, this is really beautiful and uh, we're going to be taking a very short break, but this is an amazing conversation. We are with Vera the vocalist. This is Testify and his testimony is one that if you're a parent watching, you need to send to your children, you need to send to your friends. You just need to share it with someone because we all are sinners and we definitely fall short of the glory of God. We have sinned. I was corrected. We are not sinners. We have sinned and we fall short of the glory. <laughs> glory of God. It is not our identity. So definitely this is an episode that I believe is going to help someone. So let's take a short break. Once we get back, we still have more to discuss with Bire the vocalist. So please do stay with us. Namaste ji. Have you ever heard of Asians that have come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ as their personal savior? On the Testify show every Thursday, we have a special segment on the third Thursday of every month known as the Asian Testify. You can't go ahead doing wrong, but you pursue the truth and trust of God and he will make the ways for you. I asked myself what would happen if i give my life to you now in my 18s you know and and how much further would you carry me as a result join me nigel casmiro de mello as we listen to amazing and inspiring testimonies from asian brothers and sisters that are in the lord only here on hope tv where you look and live
All right, welcome back. This is Testify having an amazing conversation of restoration. I mean, this is one story that I've you know, had an opportunity to have firsthand. I don't think I've ever encountered <laughs> such a story. I hear it, Uko, but it's so good to have it brought home right here uh, with us in studio. So, yes, we have Vera, the vocalist, with us today. And this is an amazing story. And I think even going on and picking up from where we left, yes. it's all about um, now looking back mm. to what this did mm. for you and your relationship together. Yes. How did this bond you two? How was it you know going through the experience together with um, your now wife mm -hmm. and even looking at the fact that they were giving um, you know a time frame they have to negotiate they have to talk about it mm -hmm. you know how how was this in your relationship in this period once now you become mm -hmm. once I went back to PCA yeah as a youth coordinator mm -hmm. what happened was you know you you can actually we are in a, in, the church has a WhatsApp, WhatsApp group. Mm. And you can see conversations by people. <laughs> oh my. And these are people who say hi to you with, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine. You know? Yes. And behind, Oof. Uh, guys were writing nasty things. Nasty, nasty things. Wow. But you see, it's, it's part of life. Mm. I was asking myself, if Jesus did absolutely nothing mm -hmm. and they bashed him up, yeah. so what about <laughs> you? <laughs> and you are here, you have messed up. Yeah. You'll be bashed. You will be bashed. But That's one thing true. I loved, mm -hmm. God gave me a grace I don't know and a strength I have never understood mm. up to now. Mm. Yeah, now, uh, maybe we can now pick the conversation from, you know, you were explained that now there was a season mm. in which deliberations had to take place with yes. the pastors, mm. meeting together, discussing yes. this issue. You yes. have now come clean already. Yes. So maybe you can just let us in on understanding how was your relationship with your spouse at the time mm -hmm. and also with God? With God, I think I, I became totally dependent on him. Mm. Because, as I tell you, on this other side, there's so much grace with the elders yeah. and the pastor. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, because now once I joined in now fully to do my duties mm. as the youth coordinator, I am in this group <laughs> of uh, uh, church people and mm -hmm. church members who... You would actually wake up in the morning and see nasty comments. Na wanajua ukondani. Eh, na wanajua ni kondani. And, but I love God because yes. God had ensured that mm -hmm. I have grown as far as agility is concerned. Uh, I was stable and focused on mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. Because I would look at it and the Lord would not allow me to go into reasoning how does this person think about me. Right. Because the truth is I can never change yeah. how they see me and they view me. That's true. You know, their opinions about me. Mm. But I wanted to change my opinion about how I see myself. Wow. And I wanted also to change the opinion of my wife because by the time I was getting in, uh, as the youth coordinator, mm. now we had already married now. Mm. We had already done our wedding. And yes. That happened in the 20th of April, mm -hmm. 2016. So when I joined now the church totally, fully, mm. uh, we had already now tied a knot. Yes. Said, you know what's the better for us? So, but I wanted also to change the opinion of my wife. How does she value and see herself? Yeah. So that even if she finds someone who is ready to disgrace her, she is not yeah, swayed. swayed. Yeah. She knows who she is mm. and she knows where the Lord has taken us from. That's true. You get the whole point. Mm. And so it was a whole journey and I love that journey. Can I do things better? I can't because they're already done. Mm. They're already 
are done. Yes. The only thing I can do is to break the pattern with my children and mm. I pray for them that they don't get to go through what I went through. Yes. All right? Mm -hmm. But as far as learning was concerned, mm -hmm. I think everything happens to good for them that believe in That's the Lord true. because it was meant for me to totally depend on, on God, God yeah. and not to be judgmental. Of others. Though. Of others. Mm -hmm. Because there are people who go through that experience. Yeah. And the way the church handled it, mm -hmm. or the way they handled it from the way, uh, from the onset of things, was wrong. Mm -hmm. And they just need someone who has gone through that. That's true. To just come through for them, mm -hmm. walk with them. Yeah. And that, well, that is what I have been doing. A mm -hmm. couple of people who come and tell us this is what has happened, what do we do? And I tell them, you know what? The best thing to do is to reconcile with the Lord. Secondly, mm. reconcile with your own self yeah. and with your spouse. Yes. And then forge a plan. All right? Maximize on a strategy. Then you will grow. Mm. You get the whole point? Yes. But one thing totally depend on God. Mm. Yeah. That's the one who heals you totally. Yeah. As far as my spouse was concerned, I think we became more tighter in wow. that season. Yeah. Just knowing that the world is against us, we can't <laughs> we be together. against one another. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> we are on one side. We are on one side. Wow. And we have to pull through wow. and to make sure that we become better people. Yeah. yeah this is so inspiring because i am seeing the footprints of god in your story because i think god uses different situations to teach us what we need to learn exactly. and we can't really judge his ways mm. because his ways are perfect Very true. and this is how he chose for you to experience that dependency on him mm. and also you know that bonding your, your relationship yes. that is beautiful and and i would maybe love you to now talk about um you coming clean and you having to go through this process would you say it helped in your healing process you know in your just processing the whole thing yes it did it did because I stood down I stood before people mm. and I said it is done yeah I, I can't undo it mm -hmm. and I won't be hypocritical mm -hmm. to tell my fiance to flush it out yeah. That's, that's, that's not biblically right. Yes. And so, owning up to the mistake mm. is what people need to do at first. Yes. All right? That's what we call spiritual maturity. Mm -hmm. And I thank God because he just made me do things that way. Wow. I had his guidance because... You own up to your mistake. You say, you know what I did? I, I, I mean, <laughs> Yeah. But how do I move forward? Mm. That is where now you sit down with yourself and ask those questions. And you say you don't glory only in good times. Yeah. But you glory also in your affliction. Mm -hmm. For your affliction brings perseverance and perseverance yes. character and character hope. That's it. So I have to persevere because it is already done. Mm. I can't undo it. Yeah. All right? It's a mistake. It's yes. done. Yes. I can't pity and have a pity party mentality. Mm. No, I have to ask myself, how do I forge forward mm -hmm. from here? Yeah. And that is why you really need God. That is true. Yeah, because God will direct you. He says he directs the path. Mm -hmm. them that he loves God will direct you mm -hmm. God will direct you yeah. when you totally 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 surrender yourself to him and mm -hmm. say you know what I'm, I messed up and David is such a good 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 example yeah David was not like Adam I'm pretty sure if David was the one who came before Adam <laughs> maybe things would be different <laughs> for our world <laughs> because when David yeah. you know the story of David messing up with Uriah's wife. Mm. And Nathan is sent to David and he's told, and, and, and David, and Nathan has wisdom 
<laughs> bring, you know, he has wisdom to bring out that story. Yeah. He says there were two men. <laughs> one was way, one was rich and yes. another one was poor. Yeah. And this rich man had flock, a flock of sheep. Mm. But this one poor person had only one, 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 one sheep. Yeah. But when visitors visited <laughs> the rich person, rather than him taking one <laughs> of his many, you know, he took one. Yes. Of the only, the only one that the poor person had. And David is like, who is that person? Tell us. We go. We mm. kill this person. Mm. We need, this guy needs to be judged. Mm. <laughs> and Nathan says, long live the king. <laughs> that man is you. <laughs> yeah, long live the king. <laughs> you know? Yes. It's wisdom. It's All right? wisdom. When David realized that he had wronged, what did he do? Mm. He went straight to God. Yeah. And presented himself. And he said, God, I am here. I know I am stupid and I'm a fool. I know I have done things that do not bring glory to you. Yeah. And for a whole week he had, in fact, the Bible says, and from there he tore his robe, hmm. uh, his uh, king and palatial robe, and he wore a sack, and he akaji pakam changana ash. You get the whole point? Yeah. A total surrender and for a whole week he was praying and crying out to the Lord and asking God please, please, just forgive me. Mm. I know I have sinned. And the Lord actually had him. Yeah. After a week God sends, uh, talks to Nathan and tells Nathan, no, okay, go to, to David and tell him I have had him and I will spare his life. Mm. But consequences. consequences there are consequences to his action. Mm. All right? And what was the consequence? Someone has to die because I said someone has to die. Mm. And that person is... The child. The child. Mm. And David went back again. Mm -hmm. The same process. Cried out to the Lord. Fasted. Whoa, oh, sack clothes. Ah. Mm. Ah, Kalia. <laughs> but the Lord said, you know what? Now this time, because of the consequence, there is... Every sin has a consequence. And my consequence yeah. was people had to judge me. Yes. People had to talk badly about me. Right. That one is guaranteed. Even the disciples were told by Jesus. Mm. If they said, I use devils and uh, evil powers to heal people, mm. what about you people? They will talk ill about you. Yeah. See, it was even worse. You get the whole point? Yeah. But how you come out of it is when you release yourself to God. Yeah. You release that is powerful. That is a very, very powerful. Yes. Very powerful. Mm -hmm. Even looking at it from the perspective of we may not escape the consequences. Yes. Even for the one who is maybe headed to marriage yes. and they're in this season, yes. you may not be able to escape the consequences. But, but it's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. But now I want to talk about restoration. Because God has restored yes. you. Because many may look at it and say, I hope God punishes them or mm. this happens. Mm. And they're looking forward to the downfall. Oh. But now you have a beautiful story of mm. the fact that you're now married mm. and you're blessed. I mean, tell us about <laughs> restoration that came through and what this has meant for you and your relationship with God as well. Every process has the end product. Yeah. And in the end product, mm -hmm. there could be the product mm. and a byproduct. Right. You get the whole point? Mm -hmm. uh, when we were doing chemistry, there was a process where, I don't know, we were, we were extracting, mm -hmm. uh, what was it? Uh, hydrochloric acid. Mm -hmm. Extracting hydrochloric acid in a whole process. Mm. But in the extraction of hydrochloric acid, mm -hmm. we were getting hydrogen gas as a byproduct. Right. You get the whole point? Yes. That's the story of restoration. Mm -hmm. The story of restoration is a process where mm. it's a product, a fine product, a fine-tuned product of the process that you've worked with the Lord. The Lord has brought you from a point of shame to a point of glory. Mm. And what is the byproduct there? After, mm -hmm. things start flourishing. Yeah. 
you get the whole point because wow. you are surrendered, totally surrendered. Mm. And that is what actually happened to me. Yes. When I came through uh, the process, because now it's a forgotten story. Yeah. You get the whole point. Yes. Now I have a family. Wow. Establishment of a family. And what is the byproduct? God gave me a ministry. Mm. You get the whole point? Yes. Ministry as a musician. And God gives me grace. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. I might not be where I am, but mm -hmm. I can see grace all over. Yeah. God gives you even more than, than you thought you could handle. God gives you favor with people. Mm -hmm. You get the whole point? Yeah. And all those things are brought about by the process of restoration. Yes. Process of restoration is that process where you don't skip any, any step. Mm -hmm. Because once you <laughs> skip a step, you have to go 10 steps. Oh my, behind. All right? Yes. For you again to start acceleration, and that is God. Mm -hmm. When you invite God in something that God did not start, mm. guess what he does? He takes you back to the starting point. Yeah. Because he has to start somewhere. God has no business being an omega to something he was he is he not an alpha an to. Alpha. Mm. You get the whole point. And so restoration is that press, that process. Mm. That process where once you go through it with God, mm. there just know that there will be a fine product which is you yes. because God is interested in who you are becoming more than what you do. Wow. And so oh. what you do becomes the byproduct. Yes. Because now he gives you excellence in what you do, mm -hmm. favor with the people. Does that make sense? So your no, becoming is more important mm. and God is interested in your becoming. Yeah. And I love the fact that I have become who I am now. Yeah. Because I went through mm. that affliction and I give glory to that affliction. Amen. Because one, I, my perseverance was built and my character was built, mm -hmm. and I have hope in God. Yes, yes. and you judged God faithful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True to his word. You know? I mean, there is just a lot in everything you're saying, and it's beautiful. And it actually gave me this imagery in my head about grapes. Mm. You see, for them to become fine wine, they have to be crushed. Mm -hmm. So it's the crushing that brings out brings the fine out product. Very true. You look at olives, mm. it's the crushing that brings, brings out, out the, oil. the oil. So at the end of it all, that is literally what has happened in your life. Yes. Wow, yes. it's beautiful. And I would love for you to touch on self-condemnation. It's mm -hmm. something that we touched on yes, earlier yes. because sometimes God can forgive us, mm -hmm. but we can be our own enemy, enemy. by taking ourselves back mm -hmm. to where to God has saved us from. So just tell us about it and how important it was for you not to self-condemn, mm -hmm. but to embrace the forgiveness of God. The devil will always target your identity. Mm. And how does he target your identity? First of all, he brings guilt. Hmm. You beat yourself with guilt. You beat yourself so hard with guilt. Mm -hmm. Until... Until you lose you. Hmm. You start seeing yourself as... the fallen soldier. And... the sinner. Mm. And God separates it. God is not, it, it does not confuse words. Yeah. He does not call you sinner. He said, for them that has, have sinned. Yeah. All right? Yes. He says, nothing can separate his love mm. with yours, even sin. sin. What he does hate is the action, not the person. Mm. And so guilt is what makes now a person feel like worthless. Now you give yourself an identity called worthless. Mm. But God calls you a worthful person, if there is such mm. a word. <laughs> <laughs> CJ is scared, but I like it. <laughs> Full of worth. <laughs> Full of worth, right? Yes. <laughs> And I have an example. Uh -huh. Have you ever seen parents who call their children, Wewe ni mjinga? 
you understand? Yeah. What you do, you give an identity to that kid. Yeah. You have to separate the person and the action. Yeah. Yeah, see Jinga. Mhm. It's just that he acted stupidly. Mhm. And you have to separate why are you acting stupidly? I know you as a wise person. Yes. You get the whole point. Perspective is very important. Mhm. So God is interested in your becoming, your identity. He's interested in it. The same way the yeah. devil is interested in your identity because when he will lose your identity he has won. Mhm. That's true. You get the whole point? That's true. For many have sinned and fallen short. Short. Mm. He does not call them for many are sinners. Mm. It's the action. Mm -hmm. God hates the action. Yeah. When he said I hate a lying tongue. Mm. He's totally separating see, he is separating you and that action mm -hmm. i hate a proud heart mm. okay and that's what we need to do yeah separate separate yourself just know that the lord loves you so much and you in fact he says he has called you a peculiar people mm. he has separated you yeah. set you apart for his glory mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. so you just need to know that that you are set apart mm -hmm. and whatever you do mm -hmm. all right shouldn't actually define you mm. Mm. have i answered that question you've answered it perfectly exactly what you do should not no, define, define you define you yeah because who you are is what defines you mm. and so when you know who you are in the lord yes those actions of course you will, will we will sin we will fall short of god's glory mm -hmm. but we have to separate ourselves just yeah. like david did i i i have sinned but i know you still call me mm. the man after your own heart yes and so i come to you Mhm. Mm Knowing that I'm coming to a faithful God who listens and I know repercussions are there but I'd rather have the repercussions and not lose you. That's true. As God. Yeah. Yes. Wow, that's powerful. Mm. And I'm really curious just to ask how has uh, your experience and what happened redefined your parenting to your children because now it's <laughs> 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 it's a whole shift. Shift. Because when now they make mistakes, there's the angle you have to approach, approach them it, with. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so if you can tell us about it. Of course, sometimes you will lose it. <laughs> yeah. We, hey, <laughs> parenting is hard. <laughs> parenting is not easy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because again, I've never been a parent. Mm. You know? Yeah. And I read something and I realized it makes a lot of sense. Sometimes we hold on so much to the things that our parents did to us. Mm. Yet they never had Oof. other children to That's good. You that was his first role as a parent with mm. you. They did the best they, they could. did the best they could. Yeah. You get the whole point. But now having known that I really 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 tell my mind please 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 mm -hmm. differentiate between the stupidity mm -hmm. in action mm -hmm. and the child because my child is not stupid yes eh? unless i am reading a different bible yeah. because my bible tells me the bible and the word of the lord says my and you are the head and not the tail yes you are above and not beneath mm -hmm. you are blessed you get the whole point yes. so this this I, i can't be speaking to other people of that word and in mm -hmm. my house i'm not speaking that mm -hmm. and so i alienate why are you doing that do you know that is wrong mm -hmm. do you know why i'm beating you mm -hmm. I want you to tell me why am I beating you? Mm -hmm. And we have a conversation <laughs> with my children. Wow. Yeah. So even uh, when I'm punishing them, I they will tell me, "Do you know why I'm doing this?" Mm. And they will tell me, "Yes, because I did 1 2 3 4 5." Mm -hmm. Do you think it was right? Mm. No. Can you do better? Mhm. Mm yes. Yeah. Because for me I will beat them. 
Mm. Yeah, mm. I will. I, spare I, I, the I'm, roads, spoil the child. Exactly. I beat them. <laughs> <laughs> I beat them. But the more, I have three boys. Ooh. They have to grow like military men. It's true. They have to be men. Yes. And not to lose their identity. Mm. So that nobody, and I pray, and I pray, Lord, pray that they will never lose their identity even when they meet mm. their friends. Mm. That I will equip my children to know who they really are. Yeah. They are men. And there are responsibilities that men take over. There is a posture that a man should take up, mm. you know, and be like. Yeah. You get the whole point. So that they don't get to that level where I really don't. Hey, Jehovah Lord, <laughs> please exempt my children. And the children Amen. of the people who are watching us, exempt, yes. exempt the issue of identity mm. crisis in their lives mm. in Jesus amen mm. amen powerful amen mm. i mean that's so huge because i feel it's a huge responsibility bringing yes. up three boys yes. and from your experience now you're like you can't let them go the same route, route. you did yes. so there's those things that you have to enforce yes. that is really good because i feel like that in itself redefines how you handle them in the first place yes. But this has been really good. And maybe someone who is watching us this uh, wonderful time and maybe they're asking themselves, will God forgive me? You know, what I've done is worse than what Biri has done. Maybe what can you tell them, you know, from your own story, from, de uh, you know, deriving from what God has done for you, even to restore your life. Yes. What can you tell them? Just have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with someone who is struggling today. Your sins were already forgiven at the cross. Mm -mm. All we need to do is to own up to the mistake and ask ourselves, mm -hmm. how do I forge from here? Yeah. How do I move forward? What will help me? And get your Bible to be your manual. Mm -hmm. every, every manufacturer, before they bring out their products to the people, they bring the products together with a manual so that you understand how this machine operates mm. and the manual for humanity is the bible and so just sit down and read the word for yourself and mm. you'll realize how the lord has redeemed you and how he has forgiven you and you are good to go the only thing you need to do is forgive yourself mm. and come clean with god and yeah. reason with god mm -hmm. and allow God to walk with you. Mm. That's it. Wow, that's beautiful. That's very beautiful. I mean, we're just from the Easter season. Yes. So I think it's just timely even to be having this conversation at such a time as this. And maybe now um, you can just tell us, you know, how can people find you? What are you currently doing? Any projects in line? Yes, yes, yes. Um, people can find me on all social medias. Mm -hmm. uh, as Bire the vocalist. Mm. Bire the vocalist. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm also in church yeah. at Karura Community Chapel. Mm -hmm. So most of my weekdays I'm there. So if you can DM me and tell me maybe you want to see me and we could have this candid conversation, we yeah. could. Yes. Because we are meant to sharpen one another. Mm. So you can come, we can have a conversation in church. Yeah. Uh, book an appointment, maybe DM me. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, then from there we can kick start a conversation. Mm. Uh, and if you, sometimes <laughs> we will go with time. You yes. Know? <laughs> <laughs> sure. But I'm doing so many other projects. Yes. Um, I had just released a song called Attention. Mm. Uh, basically, it's just a Revelation 3.20 that says, mm. The Lord is at the door knocking. Yes. He who opens that door, he will dine with him. Mm. And so the Lord loves you regardless of things that have happened in your life. Yeah. The things you've gone through. God loves you regardless of anything that is happening in your life. Mm. And that's all that I'm preaching. I'm preaching about Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus loves us. Amen. I have uh, an album coming up, hopefully by August to be done. Mm. Uh, and then so we release it. And mostly I'm reaching out to the young people because we have left it to, to other people who maybe yeah. are not shaping their culture very well. But we would want to shape their culture back in school, everywhere. Mm. 
and so I have embarked on a on a on a whole album for the young people, mm. and just to bring the word in the best way they would understand it yes. and take it up. Wow, yes. that's beautiful. Mm. I mean, the passion for the young is inspiring yes. because I think that's where the devil has attacked the most, <laughs> even now. Yes. So that is really good. Thank mm. you so much, Bire, for coming through. I really appreciate what the Lord is doing in your life and yes. through you Amen. because I know that freedom is available to anyone who wants it. Very true. And whoever is watching us today and this interview has moved them to come before God and tell God, I need you to forgive me. Mm. Come before the parents, come before your pastor do not be afraid do it because from what I've gotten from your story God backed you up yes God really backed you up God will not leave you he will not forsake you the moment you decide to come clean he says come let's reason together I think that was my favorite yes. bit yes. that you mentioned about God saying don't reason it on your own mm. don't struggle don't battle it on your own when you come clean before God and you reason together with him, mm. I believe that freedom is available. This has been amazing. Thank you so much for your feedback. Thank you for everyone who has been tuned in. Asante sana, asante, asante sana. I believe that you've been able to learn a thing or two. You can share with us what is that one thing that stood out for you from this interview and you can share this link with a friend with a relative if you're a mom and you have a child who had strayed do not chase them away your embrace is what will bring them back home just like the prodigal son so you can definitely share this link with them as well i believe this is what we need to preach to our youth who are falling short each and every single day they need to know that they are loved and that their identity is not tied to the mistakes that they have made this has been really awesome my name is Beatrice Watare thank you so much for tuning in to testify today god bless you